First of all, if you'd be so kind, tell us who you are and what you do. I'm David Gorman. I am the regional director for the Center for Humanitarian Dialogue, which is a Swiss, uh, Geneva, Switzerland based uh, foundation that works on peacemaking uh, around the world. I've been with the organization for 14 years, um, but have been doing peacemaking and peace building related work since 1992, 1993 in Israel and Palestine and Indonesia and the Philippines, um, Liberia, uh, Bosnia. Um, and I've been living in those countries during much of that time. And tell me what you will be talking about here at the festival. Well, today I think, interestingly enough, uh, a lot of the conflicts that we in fact deal with have to do with uh, separatist movements, uh, movements for uh, independence or greater autonomy or what have you. And so it's rather fitting now that uh, with, of course, uh, the issue of um, the referendum here in Scotland, I think it's quite uh, timely and, uh, and um, certainly quite relevant that uh, we're here to talk about how other countries have actually struggled through this process, um, often um, and, and quite unfortunately through political violence, whereas here Scotland is actually a very good example of, the, uh, uh, of a process which is actually being done through uh, legal, political, public means, which frankly is something that we, we hope uh, many other countries can, can learn from. So Scotland could almost be an example, you know, two countries in conflict uh, around the world? Well, I think it's interesting. I mean, obviously every country is different and each one has its different histories and, of uh, institutions and public participation and, and ethnic division and so on and so forth that, that contributes to these, um, to these types of developments. But I think that uh, either way, whichever way Scotland goes, um, certainly has the process itself of how this is played out in the public sphere um, through the participation of people, um, through the legal processes and so on and so forth actually has a, a, a lot of positive things to offer for the rest of the world that you can work through these things um, in peaceful, democratic, uh, legal ways uh, without bloodshed. Thank you. And what power does culture perhaps have in countries um, that are in conflict? Does culture have any power at all, you know, you know in, in the midst of a war? Well, I think that um, certainly culture uh, is, is one of the first victims of a war. Um, you, you, particularly ones involving uh, separatist types of movements where people try to identify why they're different and what makes the other uh, opponent um, um, separate or uh, perhaps uh, less acceptable to their people. Um, so unfortunately you often see culture used as a political tool in, uh, in, in many conflicts I'm afraid. Um, cultural festivals like Beyond Borders which brings together um, diplomats, um, artists, journalists. Do you see a value in that, um, in bringing all these people together to share their ideas? I think it's enormously important because just as culture can be used, as I was saying, to be a, a tool that um, uh, for conflict, it can also, perhaps most importantly, and as we've seen in the past, be also be a tool to bring people together. And I think that uh, what this festival does is precisely that. It, it helps to uh, provide a, a venue where people can um, uh, step away from the, the environments that they're in around the world in these difficult uh, contexts. You have a lot of, for example, Ukrainians here right now, some from the east and some from the, the west of the country. And I think the venue and I think the festival and I think the history of it and what it's been uh, all about um, and, and then what they learn from, from other people and their experiences both here and abroad, I think that offers something um, where they can start to, they can take that home with themselves and say, it doesn't have to be this way. Um, and in fact, we can have uh, experiences from other places that can help us learn on how we can prevent or resolve conflict in our places. And culture is, of course, one of those things that can bridge people uh, across the divide. Thank you very much. We've got another minute, have we? Another yeah. two minutes? Um, the title of uh, the talk that you're going to take part in today is How Do in International Institutions Make Peace? What sort of, what would be your basic message, do you think, that you would try to get across in that? Well, unfortunately, I don't have a message in this time. <laughs> right now, I think the world is at a very um, critical moment. Um, international institutions that were established after World War II to maintain the peace, I think, have been increasingly questioning whether or not um, they're still relevant, and whether they still can indeed enforce the, the peace and resolve conflict based on what we're seeing uh, this day and age in Syria, 
or Ukraine or other parts of the world. Uh, borders are being violated, civilians are still being d displaced and, and massacred. Um, we're seeing a, a, a serious threat by non-state actors and state actors uh, uh, against some of the, the basic norms and principles, conventions and laws and institutions that we have, um, that has been the bedrock of, uh, of, of, of the world for the last uh, 60 or so years. It hasn't been perfect, they've made many mistakes, but at the same time, now I think we need to really say to ourselves, you know, what do we need to change? Where do we need to improve? There needs to be a lot of self-reflection and I'm looking forward to this event to help move that debate forward.